Hello, and welcome back to The Cube here from our Lake House press room over at the Intercontinental, part of Databricks Data and AI Summit. And I'm so excited to have Raj Baines with me, CEO of Prophecy. Uh, probably haven't heard of them, but I think that they're in a space that's going to become extremely hot, especially with all of that's going on with AI and ML. This whole idea that being able to bring data engineering to the masses and being able to do it in an easier way because there's just skills gaps everywhere uh, when you look at this whole ecosystem. So welcome on board and uh, you know, why don't you give people kind of an idea of what Prophecy is about? Sure, thank you so much for having me here. I'm super excited. Uh, Prophecy is a low-code uh, data transformation or data engineering product. So this is, you can think of it as the next generation of ETL. But it's, it's different because I think what we looked at was that early 90s, everybody was writing code. So you had SQL and Perl scripts and Bash. And then people decided, hey, that's not how we do ETL. Let's all move to tools. And, and then we moved to the cloud and people gave that up because those tools no longer work. So what Prophecy is, we provide a low-code environment which makes people productive, makes everything very simple. But underneath it, we are generating high-quality code. On Databricks, it's Spark code or uh, Scala code. On the SQL side, it's SQL with DBT core. And so we are making people productive, but without giving up code. And this is also helping them keep the data where it is and transform on top of it, right? That's, yes. That's really the idea of data engineering. Yes, the data stays where it is. It stays in Databricks, it, it could stay in Snowflake. So it stays there, we transform it, we, you know, we make it much easier to clean it, put it all together so, so that you know, every people, and you know, there's people in data engineering who want to be more productive because they're serving many line of businesses. On the other hand, you also have the line of business people who are, who, who are frustrated, right? They're stuck uh, behind the central data engineering team and uh, they want to get work done and they've been talking about data mesh, et cetera, self-serve platform because they want uh, to not be blocked. They want to get their data transformation done themselves and, and, and for that, having a low code, a visual drag and drop environment you know, fits, fits right in. So, so that makes you know, data a lot more accessible to line of business and removes that dependency. Yeah, and I, I think even when we were just catching up before this, I, I think we saw this collapse in uh, the infrastructure layer, when mm -hmm. like down at Kubernetes and stuff. It went to, they had SREs and you had IT ops and a whole bunch that kind of collapsed into platform engineering. And we seem to be seeing the same thing happening with data engineering and data analysts and it, it kind of a, a data, you know, I guess you could say almost an app engineer kind of collapsing into one with the data analysts and data yes. engineering coming closer together. It's coming closer together. We're seeing slightly different distribution in different companies, a little bit more data engineering, a little bit more data analysts, but it has to come together, right? And I was part of the Hadoop movement when back that yeah. happened um, managing Apache Hive, but I think where that went wrong is it said people who are experts in data experts in their business have to come to us and learn all the you know, nuts and bolts of our technology. We look at that and say, it's just wrong. Yeah. The technology has to go meet the people in the business where they are. They, are ex you know, they don't care about your technology. They want to get their business jobs done. So we have to enable them to do that. So I think that's what we are focused on as we make it easier and easier. You can be a data engineer, you can be a data analyst. Everybody's empowered. I, I think as important as data is becoming, I mean, you've got to enable everybody. So, uh, so yeah, so you know, they, they should be experts in their domain, not in the underlying technologies. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. And I, I think, again, uh, I've dabbled in this world so for quite a while now, and I, I think when you start to look at how transparency, making it easier, low code, because, you know, again, I think even some of the announcements today of, of you know, some of the Lake House IQ stuff that they're yes. doing, it seems to come together with what you guys do as well and help help to bridge that gap to them. Yes, definitely, and uh, generative AI is going to play a big role. And that's, uh, actually, that talks about a new product that we've released. So, uh, so what we did is, so we have the low code product that makes data engineering on Databricks and other Spark open source Spark, uh, you know, very productive, simpler. And uh, so uh, we have a lot of really large enterprises moving on to us 
and, and, and running these tens of thousands of data pipelines. So you won't hear of us because I can't advertise. I can't <laughs> advertise because you have all these modern data stack companies with these tiny point features running out with you know influencer, you know, startup engineers who talk and talk and talk, and my enterprise customers, I can't even use their logo. We are in the modern data stack, of all the other tooling companies, we are largely, right now we are running the largest workloads, tens of thousands of pipelines for like Fortune 5, Fortune 10 companies, right? And and we can't even use their logo. Yeah. So that's one thing, so so we were doing that, right? But then uh, on the but line, but yeah. For, but for that, like how, how, even though you can't say who they are, no. what is the use case you're solving for those for those Fortune 5, yeah. Fortune 10? I mean, the the basic ETL use case yeah. is that like let's say I'm you know the simplest way I explain it is I'm a product manager I need data right so let's say I have a credit card and I need data where I want to see who my profitable customers are then I want to say what makes them unique I need demographic data then I'm like which rewards do they like can I find more customers so all of that data is specific to my use case then I look over my shoulder I've got the mortgage person they need completely different set of data so let's say you have a bank. Everybody, every team needs a different set of data for their product, for their analysis, and they end up with these production pipelines that are like tens of thousands of them running uh, across their businesses, right? And, and, and of course they're running right now on legacy on-prem technologies, and, and what they need to do is that they want right. to get productive, but also move all of those over. Yeah, and you were saying, uh, I think, again, I think I love the fact that, again, I'm, a, I'm an open source as one guy kind of guy. Yeah. You, you're doing with Spark and you're doing with DBT Core. Yes. For those who don't know the difference between DBT Core and DBT Labs, DBT Core is the open source version of DBT. Yes. Yes. And so you work with, I, I would assume they could use it with Labs too if they wanted to. But, um, yeah, they could, but uh, I think uh, we are very much focused on what our customer wants. Yep. Not so much in like, Yes, we will support an open source format. So in Spark, you build pipelines, everything is open source. Right. SQL, we wanted to do the same. DBT core becomes popular. Okay, we'll adopt it, right? But then our customers come in and say, you know what, we are coming from Alteryx. Ah. Data analysts have been using visual drag and drop and using Alteryx. And uh, they are like, you know, we don't want to write complicated SQL. And, but some of them do. Yeah. And and now we are like, okay, with this dilemma, we are like, okay, so we l listened to everything the customers asked us to do, and it was clear that DBT Core is a good starting point, but DBT right. Labs is not much, like it's a, it's a UI on top of DBT Core, right? Right. right. So, uh, so, our cust so we said, can we give the DBT Core open source community a product that is say 10x better than DBT Labs. So, so where where do customers go to get started with Prophecy? Do they go to the Databricks uh, marketplace? Is that a yeah. good place to start out? Yeah, for Prophecy, you can go to you can go to app.prophecy.io. Yep. You can sign up for you can start using Prophecy on uh, on Databricks. Mm -hmm. You can start uh, using us on a SQL data warehouse. You could go to Databricks uh, Partner Connect. If you click that. Uh, you can go into, uh, uh, you know, it'll, the products will handshake and you are into Prophecy and already everything in your da uh, Databricks account right. is connected and you can get started. But, uh, and then the other thing is, uh, yeah, so, so it's sort of exciting stuff there. Also, we're doing a bunch of stuff with Generative AI. That, that is a very interesting. Excellent. So, yeah. No, I think it's, again, super interesting that you're going down this path and I think that, again, it's a big market for you mm -hmm. guys, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you're looking at this and saying, yeah. hey, the Gen AI stuff is super interesting and yeah. that's where the future is. Yeah, and, and, and yes, Gen AI is the future and, and coming back to the, uh, the SQL product, right? For data analysts, now we released actually last week, which mm -hmm. is very exciting, is Data Copilot, ah. right? And Data Copilot is now, you write something in English. You say, hey, give me your top five spending customers. And it'll say, okay, I'll get the customers, their orders, aggregate orders by customer, who are the top five, sort them. It'll build the whole visual pipeline for you. Underneath it's DBT Core, right? That'll get generated, but you know, it, it is really democratizing. So I think, yes, data engineering will become great with generative AI, 
but but the data copilot will make uh, the business data users much more productive and you know trying to wrestle with a particular sql or this format is just so last generation right. so <laughs> it's it's all it's all moving to uh, to generative ai and uh, and and visual development right if that can do 70% of your work why would you uh, wrestle with code absolutely no it makes sense having been there and done that and done all the pearl scripting and stuff to do etl in my past life I'm glad there's things like prophecy coming around the corner because yes. it, you know nobody wants to be sitting there doing that it was it yes. was tough <laughs> it, it, it used to be tough <laughs> and the other very interesting thing is uh, we've got uh, we've got customers saying hey I'm using you on uh, this uh, for my ETL on structured data yeah I have can I want to build generative AI apps so now that becomes very interesting because there's been this Databricks Snowflake dynamic playing out. And so we said, hey, can you ETL all your unstructured data into something like Pinecone, a vector database? Right. So we built that and, and you, so now you can build a chatbot, right? You can just ETL all your data into a vector database and uh, and when somebody asks a question, look up the relevant documents, send it to OpenAI and say, here's the, uh, given all these documents, what do you think is the answer? Yeah. You can build that in a week. It's amazing yeah. the new kind of applications you can build yeah. given all of that. No, totally exciting. And you know, I want to thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. It's been great. I think this is a space we're definitely going to be watching because yes. I think it's it's just starting to get super interesting with everything yes. that's coming. So Raj, thank you from Prophecy. Mm -hmm. You can check them out in Partner Connect. This is the Cube. We're here from our Lake House press room. Thanks, and we'll be back in a few minutes with our next guest.